Think about this, if you want a sporty, powerful, two-door, short wheelbase SUV, there aren't really that many to choose from. You have the Jeep Rubicon 392 with 470 horsepower from its 6.4 liter V8, but then you have to go to the unlimited uh, version of the Wrangler, which is the four-door long wheelbase one. Then you have the V6 Ford Bronco Raptor, which doesn't come in the two-door uh, version, which I think is a big mistake because that would be really cool to see. But you also have the crazy Land Rover Defender 90 and this has a 518 horsepower, 461 pound-feet of torque, 5 liter supercharged V8, which is nuts in today's world and that's why I love it. So in this video, I'm going to show you the design development of this thing. I, if, if I were to buy one of these today, if I was in the market for a, a two-door short wheelbase SUV, I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than the Land Rover 90. However, there is one problem with it, which we're going to talk about when we look at the design from a front side and rear and also have a look at the interior. But first of all, let's jump into Photoshop here and let me show you why I think this is uh, almost an underrated uh, car at the moment and design. So here we have the des official design sketches from the uh, Land Rover design team and I think it's always interesting to see how this idea came to be and how they came to the final results. Up here we have this very looking like very early doodles of the side view. What I think is interesting here is all of these sketches from the very start has this very sharp chamfer shoulder line which I think is uh, one of the def Defender's uh, clear identifiers. In the old one it was a bit rounded but here they sharpen it up and you can see that it continues here into the front end and into the, uh, the, the top part of the, of the front and uh, housing this Defender lettering right in the center. When they designed the front face, what they said, the designers said that they did not want it to be too aggressive and they did not want it to be too uh, friendly either. They wanted to have something in between and I think they did a fantastic job achieving that because it doesn't look too aggressive and it also doesn't look too happy or friendly when you look at the front face of this car. Here's another doodle that then turn, turn into a marker sketch. Look at this beautiful blue marker. Doesn't this sheet, when you look at this, doesn't this just want to make you uh, pull out a couple of markers and just get doodling? It's so inspiring to see sketches like this. At least that's what I think. So here we have the line work of this sketch and then kind of added the same, uh, refined the sketch a little bit to create this marker sketch. Down here we have a uh, different variation of the uh, tail light. So we can see that they had a couple of ideas with having a light bar like this. I'm glad they did not go in this direction. I think uh, what they have in the production version creates a lot more uniqueness for this design. But we still have this sharp chamfered shoulder line intact in pretty much every single sketch. You can see that here as well. I love that they just splashed some markers onto the focal point of this sketch. So when you sketch cars like this, you always want to have a focal point of the sketch, specifically when you sketch it in a, uh, a perspective view. So if you have a three-quarter front view, the corner that is closest to the camera or or the viewer in this case this is where you want to add most attention to to the details and then you can see that they did that here with the marker sketch and some line shading going in here and it kind of fades out to just line work in the far rear this is one way of helping creating some depth in in a simple sketch like this love this uh, cool gray side view and here we have another front end view still with this chamfer intact however it looks like in the production that it doesn't really go down as much as it does here. Instead, it kind of wraps around this corner, which I'm going to show you in the production version. This is actually the uh, the sketches for the concept that uh, they showed uh, right before they released the production version. And I think this looks pretty cool as well, but I do prefer what they did with the production version over this. So this here, we have some black graphics in the front end, as you can see, kind of housing the entire front with this black graphic. And then you have this bumper piece coming in or the skid plate in the bottom. It looks very utilitarian, but I do prefer what they did with the headlights in the production version, as you can see down here. 
and you can also see that the chamfer that goes in the shoulder wraps around now more than it does in these um, early sketches where it kind of goes down and creates almost a framing of the bottom part of the front end and the side very cool design approach by Land Rover to create this uh, new a new defender they said also that they did not want to take uh, too much inspiration from the original defender and I can see why because just creating a modernization of that it wouldn't be anything um, specifically new about that but they want to have it be inspired by the old one in a modernized way and that's also one thing I think they achieved uh, very well with the with the new defenders so up here here I'm going to show you the the front side and rear and also talk about the interior here up top we have the three versions of the defender that's currently on sale I think the 130 looks <laughs> looks almost like a school bus with this long overhang in the rear end it's probably very functional because you have a lot more seating. You can see that we have a, a seating space right here in the back. So it probably has seats up to eight or maybe nine people. I don't know. You also have a, you can equip it with a front center piece, center seat in between the driver and the passenger um, seat to have even more seating in the front row. And in the middle, of course, we have the 110 Defender. This looks uh, proportionally, I think this looks the most traditional and the most normal, easy on the eye is the 110. Looks really good. I like the proportions of this and I love, what I love about all these defenders is the clear cutoff in the rear end. It's like it's been just cut with a sword cut off in the rear end to create this very sharp looking rear. And then we have the 90 and they shrank this by a lot. So they shrank it by 17 inches so this is 17 inches smaller in the wheelbase or shorter wheelbase than the 110 which is nuts and you can definitely tell by looking at these proportions that the 90 it almost looks like a completely new model in my opinion like it, it it's so different in its proportions it looks like it's completely separated from the rest of the lineup just because of these proportions but have a look at this v8 in black i think it looks so cool and so menacing i would probably get it in black just based on these pictures i love these photos here you can see this clear shoulder line wrapping around the front end with the defender and these new housing for the headlights which i think in black kind of melts into the body more and then you have this half circle creating a bit of an aggressiveness in the front end, but not too aggressive, exactly what the designers wanted. And it's pretty flush, all the details in the front. We don't have a clearly, clearly defined bumper even, and I think it looks really good. We have the skid plate in the bottom, and of course, for the V8 model and also for the rest of the lineup, you can get this with these big 22-inch wheels. And this is where I think the problem comes in <laughs> with the V8 uh, specifically with the V8 Defender 90, is that this isn't really suited for trails because simply because of these tires. Now you can still get, you can option this with um, all-terrain tires, but you will still get the 22-inch wheels with that option, which I think is a little bit weird. What I would do, I would probably switch these wheels out and uh, add some proper off-road wheels, maximum 18 inch with a fatter sidewall and some ag more aggressive tread on the tire. And that would be my dream uh, Defender 90 V8 by having those changes made. But everything else looks really cool. I would personally not, I think this is an option to have this uh, graphic piece right here but i would probably not get that because i like how clean this surface is i would probably not uh, go for that option looking at it from a side view you can clearly see how sharply cut off the rear end is and it kind of feels like the car is supposed to extend a little bit further because of this very vertical cut in the rear but it also creates a very unique identity for this specific model and i love this shoulder line here even though you can't really see it but it wraps around the entire car from the very end of the cut point here 
into the front and also of course on the other side. I think that's a beautiful little feature of um, all the Defenders, both the 90, the 110 and the 130. Now looking at the graphics of the rear, so as you can see this is a very flat surface in the rear and as I said it looks very unique and utilitarian not just in the surfacing of this car but also in these graphic details. I love these squares specifically with the tiny radius that we have on both the small ones and the big ones and this definitely creates it it it's doesn't look beautiful but I don't think it's supposed to look beautiful in a Defender. It's supposed to look almost military style in combination with some class and I think they really nailed it here. And what one detail I really like about the V8 version is if we go down low, if we look what's going on in the bottom, we have an exposed almost the entire exhaust system in the bottom. It doesn't even have a diffuser. This is very old school and looks like it belongs to something from the 80s or the 90s that I absolutely love that Land Rover decided to put it on the uh, on the V8 Defender and have it completely exposed in the bottom. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at this interior. So, they decided to move the gear shifter from this point up to this point and I think this also makes it look almost like a control panel or something like that. It looks very utilitarian inside as well and the reason why they put it up there is because they wanted to have the option to have a third seat right in the middle. It's not going to be a very comfortable seat but you can still get it if you want to. Other than that we have the infotainment screen and this is actually an interesting option because it, it, it only costs you 140 40 bucks to update the infotainment screen from a 10 inch to 11.4 and to me that feels like a complete no-brainer 140 bucks and you get a little bit bigger screen uh, I think that's definitely worth it but the integration of it we can talk more about the integration of this infotainment screen not my favorite way of just having it not connect to any of the lines but at the same time I kind of forgive Land Rover for doing it here because this is a Defender so it doesn't have to have a very stylized interior so this positioning or this placement integration of the um, of the infotainment screen it kind of suits the overall personality of the Defender. I also like that we have this big bar going across and the Defender stamped sitting deep in the dash on the passenger side and that we have a clear house for the gauge cluster completely digital as you can see which is totally fine and overall it just feels like a very simplistic interior that goes well with the exterior. If you look at this interior uh, you would assume that the outside of the car would have a similar feel. I think it's kind of rare to see these days but I think the interior works really well with how the exterior they, they have a a uh, continuity to them going from the interior to the exterior and have a similar design philosophy all around the car and even inside. Now the Land Rover Defender 90 V8 of course it's not a cheap car it starts at $106,260 which is not bad at all. I mean for what you get it's such a unique car. I kind of think that's a pretty good deal but then when you add options you're gonna go into a $115,000 range and 0 to 60 is done in 4.4 seconds with the quarter mile is done in 12.9 seconds with a 110 miles per hour speed which is nuts in a car like this. The fuel mileage is not that bad. I mean it, it gets kind of the same fuel economy that I get with my Ram Rebel that do it does have the 35 inch tires on but it averages around 15 miles per gallon which is a number that I would say is pretty expected for this car but I wanted to make a video on this because I think it's an underrated design an underrated car specifically in the 90 version and I really appreciate Land Rover for making the decision to actually make a V8 520 horsepower short wheelbase Defender.